As early as the 1970s, countries began to claim islands and various zones in the South China Sea, such as the Spratly Islands, which possess rich natural resources and fishing areas. The Spratly Islands have been at the center of the debate in the South China Sea. In July 2016, the Permanent Court of Arbitration at The Hague issued its ruling on a claim brought against China by the Philippines under UNCLOS, ruling in favor of the Philippines on almost every count. While China is a signatory to the treaty, which established the tribunal, it refuses to accept the court's authority. In recent years, satellite imagery has shown China's increased efforts to reclaim land in the South China Sea by physically increasing the island's size and creating new ones altogether. In addition to piling sand onto existing reefs, China has constructed ports, military installations, and airstrips, particularly in the Paracel and Spratly Islands, where it has 20 and 7 outposts, respectively. China has militarized Woody Island by deploying fighter jets, cruise missiles, and a radar system. China, Taiwan, and Vietnam contest sovereignty of the Paracel Islands. China has occupied them since 1974. In the eastern part of the sea, China, Taiwan, and the Philippines all claim Scarborough Shoal. Though, China has controlled it since 2012. China's 9 dash line, and Taiwan's similar 11 dash line, overlap with the theoretical 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zones that five Southeast Asian nations could claim from their mainland coasts under the 1994 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOS. The South China Sea, or Southeast Asian Sea, while the Philippines named it as West Philippine Sea, is a marginal sea of the Western Pacific Ocean. It is bounded in the north by the shores of South China, and in the west by the Indochinese Peninsula. While in the east, the islands of Taiwan and the northwestern Philippines islands of Luzon, Mindoro, and Palawan. And in the south by Borneo, eastern Sumatra, and the Bangka Blitung Islands, encompassing an area of around 3,500,000 square kilometers. Multiple Asian governments assert sovereignty over rocks, reefs, and other geographic features in the heavily trafficked South China Sea. However, the People's Republic of China arguably makes the most assertive claims. China's sweeping claims of sovereignty over the sea have antagonized competing claimant nations of Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam. China, the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Brunei have been locked in an increasingly tense territorial standoff in the South China Sea, where U.S. Navy ships and fighter jets have carried out patrols to promote freedom of movement, challenge Beijing's expansive claims and reassure allies like the Philippines. The disputes have intensified since China turned several disputed reefs into missile-protected island bases to bolster its claims to almost the entirety of the South China Sea. The maritime dispute is regarded as a possible Asian flashpoint and a delicate front in the U.S.-China rivalry in the region. The United States has a role in preventing military escalation resulting from the territorial dispute. Washington's defense treaty with Manila could draw the United States into a potential China-Philippines conflict over the substantial natural gas deposits and lucrative fishing grounds in the disputed territory. To protect its political, security, and economic interests in the region, the United States has challenged China's assertive territorial claims and land reclamation efforts by conducting freedom of navigation operations and bolstering support for Southeast Asian partners. Also, in response to China's assertive presence in the disputed territory, Japan has sold military ships and equipment to the Philippines and Vietnam to improve their maritime security capacity and deter Chinese aggression. About a third of the world's maritime, relating to ocean trade, goes through the South China Sea. It is estimated that more than $5 trillion in global trade flows through the region each year, while explorations have discovered abundant natural gas and hydrocarbon reserves. Half of all oil and gas tankers from the Middle East sail into it, on their way to China, Japan, the US, and elsewhere. 
China and five smaller nations all lay claim to overlapping territories among the sea's vast stretch of islands, rocks, and archipelagos, leading to tensions that threaten peace and prosperity. The location of the sea also makes it militarily strategic, and valuable for national security. The failure of Chinese and Southeast Asian leaders to resolve the disputes by diplomatic means could also undermine international laws governing maritime disputes and encourage destabilizing arms buildups. Five small nations claim parts of the South China Sea's land features and surrounding waters. Vietnam and the Philippines are the most active claimants. Vietnam bases its current claims on 17th century maps. Troops from France's colony of Vietnam occupied some Paracel Islands in the 1920s. After the Vietnam War, Vietnam occupied the western Paracels and annexed certain Spratly land features. In 2009, Vietnam declared sovereignty, supreme legal authority, over both the Paracels and Spratlys. The most contentious issue between Vietnam and China may be that of the Paracel Islands which were controlled by Hanoi, until China seized them during the bloody battle of the Paracel Islands. Today, many of the Vietnamese claims overlap those of Malaysia and the Philippines. After gaining independence from the U.S., in 1946 the Philippines took control of several Spratly land features. Later, the Philippines declared all the Spratlys its territory. The Philippines also claim sovereignty over Scarborough Shoal, this is a minor feature about 150 miles from the Philippines. It is nevertheless important for its strategic location, near the Philippines and major shipping lanes in the northern part of the South China Sea. In the southern part of the sea, China, Taiwan, and Vietnam claim all the approximately 200 Spratly Islands, while Brunei, Malaysia, and the Philippines, a U.S. treaty ally, claim some of them. Vietnam controls the greatest number. Malaysia's claims in the SCS involve the waters surrounding the eastern border of Peninsular Malaysia and East Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur has avoided leveling too much public criticism at China, due in part to the influential ethnic Chinese group in that country. In 2020, 22.6% of Malaysia's population was classified as Chinese. Indonesia disputes China's assertions of maritime rights near its coast not an official claimant to any part of the disputed areas, although China's nine-dash line overlaps the Indonesian Natuna gas fields, Jakarta is more concerned with maritime security and freedom of navigation. On the other hand, it is important to highlight that tensions with Beijing have been rising due to constant incursions into the area by Chinese vessels caught fishing illegally in the waters off the Natuna Islands. A dispute over how to interpret UNCLOS lies at the heart of tensions between China and the United States over the activities of U.S. military vessels and planes in and over the SCS and other waters off China's coast. The United States and most other countries interpret UNCLOS as giving coastal states the right to regulate economic activities within their EEZs, but not the right to regulate navigation and overflight through the exclusive economic zone, including by military ships and aircraft. China and some fellow SCS claimants hold that UNCLOS allows them to regulate both economic activity and foreign militaries' navigation and overflight through their EEZs. A recent agreement between Indonesia and Vietnam over maritime boundaries in the South China Sea will likely smooth over the occasionally tense relationship between the two Southeast Asian nations. Practically, the successful Indonesia-Vietnam exclusive economic zone demarcation will help both countries to resolve illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, which has been a serious bilateral irritant and a broader issue involving third-party countries, including China and Thailand. The agreement also provides hope for the strengthening of the region's commitment to international maritime norms and principles, as encapsulated in the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. A fellow socialist state ruled by an authoritarian communist party, Hanoi is under growing pressure from China, particularly around overlapping sovereignty claims in the South China Sea. 
geographic proximity to the Taiwan Strait means that Vietnam would be well within the range of impact from potential escalations or miscalculations and accidents, and thus it has every reason to be concerned. Taiwan. This is not a conflict that anyone in Southeast Asia would like to see, nor discuss it to the same degree that it animates the Western security debates. But the concerns about potential risks from miscalculations and accidents when there is a heightened military presence are real, and Vietnam, for one, cannot afford to dismiss the possibility of conflict. Vietnam possesses no security alliance with any great power or alliance network, which is exactly what made Ukraine susceptible. Hanoi's non-aligned foreign policy since the end of the Cold War means China might attack without fear of reprisal from stronger nations. The collapse of the Soviet Union left Vietnam feeling spurned by alliances to the extent that Hanoi does not even have a security alliance with its long-standing friend Russia. This puts Vietnam truly on its own in the South China Sea. The Philippines, by comparison, has large, overlapping sovereignty claims with China but can fall back on its alliance with Washington. The widespread condemnation of Beijing's belligerent response to Pelosi's trip from the US, Japan, Australia, and G7 nations, along with calls for all sides to exercise restraint from South Korea and the European Union, could theoretically encourage member states of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations to foster closer ties with Taiwan. ASEAN's official stance reflected the bloc's desire to maintain a balancing posture amid the simmering tensions between Washington and Beijing, while seeking to uphold its status and centrality by offering to play a facilitating role. ASEAN states that are more vulnerable to Beijing's power, and have maritime disputes with a giant neighbor should be learning lessons from Taiwan's situation. Basically, with the ongoing changing dynamic in relations between Beijing, Taipei, and Washington, China with its ascending power, could set a precedent to curb foreign support for smaller and weaker states with its anti-access area denial strategy. Changing economic relativities, and China's growing influence through trade and investment will be factored into the region's strategic calculus.